hello my dears welcome back to another video so today we are going to be discussing a video that was released on piers morgan uncensored so piers morgan had um blm activist iman Aiton on his show and he also brought on zuby to discuss the situation that happened with Tyree Nichols in the US. Tyree Nichols was a 29 year old black man who was brutally beaten to death by five um, police officers. So the footage of the incident was released online. A lot of people have watched it and spoken about it. From the people who have watched it, they have said that it's one of the worst cases of police brutality that they've seen in a really long time i personally have not watched it i've heard other people talk about it so it feels like i've watched it but from the way they've described it it sounds as though it was very very graphic and very messed up so they were able to obtain the footage from the body cam that the police officers were wearing but there was also i think it was a cctv camera that was on one of like the poles one of the street poles that also caught the incident he was apparently pulled over on a traffic stop or something how it escalated into what it escalated into i don't actually know but it resulted in the five police officers beating him and he later died in hospital because of the severity of his injuries so this whole incident has sparked a massive conversation online it sparked conversations about the quality of the police force in terms of training and hiring processes it's also sparked conversations about why you know the police officers did this and one of the reasons that some people have put forward is that this is because of white supremacy this has kind of been an interesting one because like i said the five police officers who did this were black now i know what you're thinking how does five black police officers killing a black man have anything to do with white supremacy where have you been you've been sleeping everything is because of white supremacy gaunt keep up in fact, just the other day, I burnt my tongue while I was drinking hot chocolate. And I know for a fact that it was because of the white man. Now I know what you're thinking. No patience, it's because you drank it too soon. You should have chilled out and let it chill out. That is exactly what a raging racist would say. But anyways, that's enough of my shenanigans. Let's get into the video. Now a Black Lives Matter organizer and activist, Iman Aiton, and rapper and podcaster, Zuby. Welcome to both of you. Iman. I don't get this narrative at all yeah. that is coming out. It's been coming here from people as well, that somehow this is all about racism and white supremacy. It's not. It's about five poorly trained, thuggish black police officers killing a black man who did nothing to deserve it. That's it. OK, so I just have to start with saying that video was absolutely disgusting. One of the worst videos I've ever seen right. in my entire life. It goes life. on and on and yeah, on. Yeah, it was disgusting. There was two versions of it, the body uh, the body footage and, the, of course, the pole from yes. across the road. Absolutely disgusting. So I'm absolutely horrified at the fact that, of course, it was five black people. Um, but for me personally, this is about an abuse of power and a disregard of human life. And those individuals need to be accountable for their actions. That I need to Don't be Don't disagree. Clear. What's it got to do with... Racism and white supremacy. So people Why are also, white people responsible for this? Okay, so people could also argue that this is due to internalized racism, which is a byproduct of societal or institutional racism, also referred to as white supremacy. So black police officers become white supremacist racists who kill black people because they work in an atmosphere of white supremacy. Is that it? I can explain it a little bit better. Okay, so anti-blackness is baked into society here and in the US, and black people are not impervious to that. And so what people fail to realise... So black people are anti-black? Yep, yeah, this exactly. So let me explain it. I know Which it's very confusing. Nonsense. So let me explain it. Let me explain it, Piers. So what people fail to realise is that when black people have to contend with racism, they can end up internalising it. And that can result in low self-esteem, self-loathing, and rejection of one's community. And when you combine those feelings, which, as we know, are also referred to as unconscious bias. When you have those feelings and they are compounded by hierarchy and power, it can lead to an individual abusing said power and projecting their self-hate onto another. And this is why, in my opinion, why we see black and white police officers killing more black people than we do white. Reason why is because of racism, which includes internalized racism, peers. Right. I, I do find it ironic how she initially said we should hold the individuals responsible for their actions. But then later on, she goes on to blame this on white supremacy. That's not how you hold someone accountable. If you're ever shifting blame onto something else or someone else, then by definition, you are not holding that person accountable. What these police officers did to Tyree Nichols was disgusting. 
and they should be held accountable for doing that. Also, the argument as well that the reason why these black men did what they did to Tyree Nichols because they work for the police force and the police force is run by white supremacy and this white supremacist institution is what's causing them to essentially be brainwashed into wanting to kill black people. If white supremacist institutions are what motivate black people to kill each other, how do you explain the countless number of young black men who are either stabbed to death or shot in the street by each other? What institution of white supremacy is motivating them to kill each other? If white supremacist institutions are what motivate black people to do this to each other, then how do you explain what's going on in the streets? I do agree with her, however, that this definitely is an abuse of power and it is also a disregard of human life. I wish we would have dived more into that. But of course we can't, the conversation has to now be diverged and this just completely sidetracked the whole conversation because I do think that that is a worthwhile conversation to be having. A lot of the time, the issue with these more dodgy cops is their abuse of power and their disregard for human life. But we will never be able to have those conversations properly because people are much more interested in discussing ideology and politics. I think that's complete nonsense. You would, because you're a white man and you don't understand. Exactly, it. I'm white, therefore no, my skin colour means I have nothing to do with it. My skin colour means I have no, nothing I mean, to no do with it. All right, well, let me go to a black man and see if he's allowed to have a view. Zuby, Problem. what's your view? Okay, so I agree with the first half of everything that was said there. I agree that the video was disgusting. I agree that this is an issue of training, and I agree that this is an issue of the human heart. I think that any attempt to put the blame on this in any way, shape, or form on racism or white supremacy or white people in general is absolutely ridiculous. I also think it's pretty degrading because this sort of idea stems from the notion that black people, black men, black women, that we do not have full agency and responsibility and therefore accountability for our actions and our words. We end up in these ridiculous situations where no matter the permutation, no matter what happens, even if there's not a single white person involved in the situation, in the Memphis police force, even the police, uh, the police chief is a black woman, the large percentage of the force is black and people are still trying to lean on this white supremacy is the answer and the reason for everything. And honestly, it's lame. And as someone who's lived my entire life as a, as a black male, uh, certainly I've never been possessed by this sort of phantom of, of white supremacy that's made me want to attack anybody, let alone another black person. And I think that we need to put the blame and responsibility squarely on the individuals who were involved I in this. Agree. I completely agree. it's tragic that this young man yeah, died. I, yeah, I completely agree. I 100% agree with Zuby on this. I do think that a lot of the rhetoric that is that some of these people say is so infantilizing to black people and it's also quite degrading. I remember having the same situation on my TikTok when I spoke about colorism and I was saying how modern day colorism in black cultures is perpetuated by black people. If you speak to darker skinned black people and you ask them who has ever picked on you or made fun of you or made you feel insecure about your complexion, I would bet my savings that they would say to you the vast majority of the people who did that to them were black. And I was trying to raise this conversation on my TikTok, which was that why do we do this to each other? Why do we make fun of each other's features? Why do we put each other down for our skin tones and how light we are, how dark we are, or what our hair texture is like, or how we choose to have our hair, whether we choose to have it natural, whether we choose to have weaves or whatever. The people who do all this shaming and stuff, the vast majority of the time are black themselves. And and I think it's important for us to have a conversation about that because we can't in one breath say that we want to uplift each other while simultaneously being the main ones who put each other down. But when I tried to have that conversation, there were people in there saying, yeah, well, it, this is because of years ago, white people, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I don't care. I don't care where you learnt your bad habits from. I don't care where you think they originate from. The point is you're doing it today. Why are you still doing it today? You are responsible for your own actions. If you choose to perpetuate this stuff that you know is harmful, that is all on you. You don't get to blame other people from however long ago. Because if you're, because they're always trying to take it back to slavery. We're in 2023, you're still doing it. Why are you still doing it? It's like people will always try and do verbal gymnastics to try and find a way to not take accountability. And it's really annoying because this is one of the things that really stops us from progressing is the fact that we can't acknowledge the role that we play in our own situations. And so I do agree with Zuby that it's very infantilizing and it's very degrading. This idea that everything we do, we learn from white people. As if black people, we were just staring into space 
just waiting for white people to arrive and tell us how to human. Like the whole thing is just ridiculous. At some point we need to acknowledge that we are responsible for our own actions. We can't just keep blaming white people. It's absurd. When you take the time to listen to these people, you realize that they kind of act like white supremacists in that they put white people on this pedestal. They think that white people invented everything. They think that white people started everything. Everything to them links back to white people somehow. Granted, the stuff that they give all the credit to white people for are usually bad things, but still, they still have this idea that white people are the, are the original creators or, or the original starters of all of this stuff. And it's like, why do you think that? And it's like, they're so obsessed with white people and I don't get it, it's so strange. It's like, even when they see, and I'm not, all of this I'm saying, by the way, is just general. I'm not talking about Iman, in particular, because I haven't really seen her do this, but I'm just saying in general, a lot of people who have these views, you notice they have certain patterns of behavior. And another thing that they'll do is anytime they see a black person who they disagree with, the first thing they'll say is that you're trying to pander to a white audience. Oh, you're just trying to tap dance for white people. And it's like, why are you so obsessed with them? Like why, it's so strange. Whenever I see a black person I disagree with, I just think I disagree with that person. But with them, it's like, they're like, oh, this person's trying to dance for the white man. This person is trying to pander to, why are you obsessed with white people? It's strange. I mean, just to note some statistics about the Memphis Police Department, that 65% of Memphis are, uh, population is black. 58% mm -hmm. of the entire police force in Memphis yeah, black. is black. Mm -hmm. the, the police chief is black. was a black woman, yeah. right? Uh, and so on and so on. So, you take all that in totality, you think, well, okay, well, where is this institutionalized white supremacy coming from, given the institution is actually served predominantly by black people for a population that is predominantly black as well? So I don't get that point. That's really interesting because I didn't know that. I didn't know that Memphis had a predominantly black police department and that it was run by a black woman. But that does definitely throw a spanner in the works of the people who were arguing that if we had more black representation within the police force, police brutality against black people won't happen because this is a police force that's predominantly black and run by a black woman. Yet despite that, they had one of the most brutal cases of police brutality. The second point I make is this. I think there's a wider issue here. The demonization of the police in America, calling them all a bunch of vile racists, has led to many older experienced good police officers mm. who are not vile racists, quitting the force all over the country. Mm -hmm. And as a result, uh, in Memphis, for example, they had a massive reduction, 20%, between 2011 and 2017, of police officers. 20% of went from the force. And so to try and restore the numbers, they made it easier to become a police officer. They reduced the restrictions, reduced the qualifications. Two of the five officers involved in killing this poor young man went through that process in that period. Mm -hmm. of not being required to have the same sort of qualifications that they used to to join the Memphis Police Department. So you have a, a bunch of people being brought in who are poorly trained, yep. who are not qualified to do the job, mm -hmm. who end up committing this kind of crime. That has nothing to do with racism or white supremacy. That has everything to do, I think, with perhaps an over-demonised force in general, with a lot of bad apples in it, mm -hmm. but over-demonised force leading to many people quitting and being replaced with people just not up to the job. I think it's, well, everything that you've said, I don't disagree with. Um, I think it's not about conflating the two things. It's just about uh, presenting a different perspective, an alternative perspective that should be considered because internal racism is a real thing. So therefore it should be considered. You just heard when a black man about, yes, very, very in a very considered that. way mm -hmm. say that basically you're talking nonsense. No, this, so he never, the idea that you so can I'll, just... I'll, I'll ask that. So Zubi, do you believe that internal racism is nonsense? Do you believe that black people cannot internalize racism? Do you believe that? I don't believe that it's completely impossible. Okay. I don't think Perfect. it's impossible for you heard a that, black right? per I don't think it's impossible for a person of any race or ethnicity to harbor hatred or animosity towards people who may look like them or share some things in common. What I don't what I completely disagree with is the idea that in every single one of these situations that no matter what happens we just jump to White supremacy is the problem. You, you see, we've seen this happen many, many times. And I agree with you. And I, agree I think with you. one of the biggest issues with it is okay. I think one of the biggest issues as well is it, it's actually a distraction from a very important conversation which uh, Piers was leaning into there, which is that when it comes to the police in the USA and also in other countries, there's clearly an issue of character, qualifications, and prejudice. training. I and don't know prejudice. exactly. 
Yeah, and prejudice is the foundation for all yes, forms of discrimination, and, and including that, sexism, misogyny, racism, and the list goes on. So if you have not dealt with it, your it prejudice can, within again, the institution, a, a, it will manifest in your yeah, racism. That's, yeah, a fact. Iman, Iman, that's a fact. A, you're talking okay. over. That's I, a fact. I, I think I'm it's going a, to, I, I'm going a good point. But yeah. secondly, you're bringing in prejudice, I, I think, I think bigotry, this is, racism, yeah. none yeah. of which had anything to do with this particular incident. Zubi looks so frustrated. And I also feel like it doesn't help that like Iman just keeps like talking over him. And he's also out of the studio. And you know how like every time someone's in the studio and someone's like located elsewhere outside of the studio, there's always like that weird delay, like that 10 second delay. So that's probably not helping situations either because every time he's trying to talk, he's getting that like delayed audio, which is kind of interrupting his flow and stuff. But yeah. Yeah, he just looks so frustrated. What are you talking about? I just explained to you internal racism, which is based off of prejudice. It had nothing to do with why these And I said it should be considered. I said it should be considered. Well, let's, let's do me finish the point you were making. Okay. The, the, uh, okay, even following on from that point, I'd also say w this is mind reading as well. So even trying to bring racism into this conversation, let's say these guys did not have guns and badges. Let's say these was, this was just a group of random thugs, five black men beating up another black man. Even in that situation, even outside the police force, I've still seen situations where people try to blame this somehow on this specter of white supremacy. And as I've said, frankly, it's embarrassing. And as I a black person, I have just, just as much clear. agency and accountability. OK, um, as I said, black people have full responsibility yep. and accountability, just like it would be ridiculous to see a video of white people beating up a white man. I've, there are videos out there of white police beating up white people. Well, I would also make the, the point. Well, black, have you seen loads of videos of well, internalized racism? Look, look, if I could just, video, on that point, I would, make, I would also make the point that if people genuinely believed it was racism, then given these scenes were as horrific as the George Floyd killing, in my, in my view, no, no better, no worse. I mean, this was, went on for a, a much longer period and was disgusting and abhorrent to watch. Completely innocent guy just getting beaten and then he died. Um, that given that, if it was racism that people genuinely believe was the motivation, we would see the same scenes on the streets of cities all over America that we saw after George Floyd's death. We would see the riots. We would see burning cities. We would see that kind of intensity of reaction. But the truth is, even the people claiming this is about racism and white supremacy, they don't believe it. Because if they did no, they believe that, that's if they did saying. believe that, that's they'd be out on the streets saying, saying it. it. And they're no, not. they are saying it. They are saying it because they do believe but it. But they're not protesting racism. in the same way because it's in their racism. heart they know it's not okay, racist. So I, I... Now that is hardly anything new. No one protests when a black person is killed by another black person. And that's because Black Lives Matter is an incomplete sentence. The complete sentence is Black Lives Matter only when they're killed by white people. Only when a black life is taken by a white person will people hit the streets and will people march. But when a black life is taken by another black person, people stay at home and they go about their business. Even if the life that's taken is a famous person that they really like. When Nipsey Hussle was killed in cold blood and robbed, no one hit the streets. Just recently, Offset was murdered. No one hit the streets. So even when these people are like famous people who are loved and like are quite influential, they still won't hit the streets because the person who pulled the trigger was not white. So they don't care. There's a massive hypocrisy when it comes to this outrage because if you really care about black lives, you should care about black lives. But if you only care about them when they're being killed by a specific type of person, then that to me shows that you don't love black people, you just hate white people. And being pro-black and anti-racist is a great disguise for your racism. But overall, that was a really interesting video and it was a very interesting discussion. And I wholeheartedly agree with Iman when she said that this is an abuse of power and this is also a disregard of human life because this is not the first time that we've seen this happen in regards to police officers. Now, the vast majority of police officers are good people, but we do also have to have conversations about the ones that aren't good. And I am personally am in favor of police reforms. I do think that the police could do it with some tweaking, especially here in the UK. I think they spend too much time policing tweets than they do policing burglaries. But anyways, I do think that, yeah, there's definitely some cases, more extreme cases, where they do abuse their power and they do abuse their authority. Like we saw this happen with the Sarah Everard case where she was murdered by a police officer. The problem that we have is that there are some people who believe that because they work within the law, 
that now means that they are above the law and so they think they can do whatever they want and act however they wish to behave and that is a problem because there should be consequences when police officers do behave like this they shouldn't feel comfortable to just go around doing whatever they want just because they're police officers because it's not a good look on police officers as a whole it makes people very distrusting of the police and it creates it helps to perpetuate a lot of the stigma that the police officers have also Piers Morgan mentions how a lot of the anti-police rhetoric and all of the vitriol and the treatment that police officers have been having recently has led to a lot of more experienced good police officers quitting the force. The problem is because of the stigma around police a lot of people don't want to do this job anymore. So what this has led to is a lot of police forces becoming desperate for police officers and so what they've had to do is reduce the entry requirements for police officers which means they are reducing the standard and if you reduce the standard then of course you're going to have lower quality police officers and so stuff like this can happen so overall it's a lose-lose situation for everyone we should be anti-bad cops not just anti-cops as a whole i think it's perfectly fine to criticize the police and and discuss the ways in which we think they can improve but that doesn't mean demonizing them i do think that some people spread rhetoric about the police that is unfair and shouldn't be spread. However, not all of it is completely ungrounded. The distrust that some people have towards the police has been enforced by some of the things that the police are doing. I don't think the police are perfect by any means whatsoever. I think you can acknowledge both sides have points. I think the people who are anti-police, they have points. But I also think the people who defend the police also have points. So yeah, it's definitely an interesting conversation and a very important conversation to be had. Um, I think this is, uh, I think both the US and the UK have issues with their police force. I imagine it's like this all around the world, to be honest. I don't, I don't think there's any country who loves their police. I also think it's important for us to start stressing again the importance of accountability and to start stressing the importance of taking responsibility for your own actions because you are the one who controls your body you are the one who controls your decisions and your actions therefore no one is responsible for your life except you there are some things that are outside of your control but most of the things that happen in your life are the result of you because you are the common denominator i think what these police officers did was disgusting and i'm glad that immediate action was taken against them i disagree with trying to blame their actions on two things outside of themselves because there are plenty of black police officers who go to work every day who do their job as they're supposed to do their job who manage to not kill anyone so to try and blame this on a bigger system doesn't make any sense because if that's the case then all of the police officers should be going around just killing black people all of the black police officers as well should also be going around killing black people. If you've got people who are working under the same institution and some choose to behave in a certain way whilst the other ones choose not to behave in that certain way, it implies there's a good amount of personal choice involved in these decisions. And so that is what we need to be criticizing is the choices that these people are making because no one has possessed them. Right, no one possessed them to do these things, they chose to do these things. We need to stop infantilizing grown adults and we need to start holding people responsible for their own personal actions. And that is all I have to really say on that. I would like to know what your views are on this. Do you agree with Iman that this was motivated by white supremacy or influenced by white supremacy? Or do you agree with Zubi that the responsibility of this should be placed solely on the police officers who are involved? I would very much like to know your view in the comments. If there's an angle to this that I've not considered, I'd be very interested in reading. If you've made it this far into the video, then you may as well like and subscribe. I am also on other socials and I make music if you would like to check me out. Thank you very, very much for giving me your time today and I will see you in my deep dive on Thursday.